basic elements of communication. I said to you, and I said we'll refer back to that. Okay? So the basic elements of communication, do you remember what I said? I said initially we, we've got a sender, do you remember? And a receiver. The sender encodes the message. Yeah? We have a sender here, he encodes the message, sends the message to the receiver. The receiver decodes the message. Then what happens next? What happens next? Dutch. So we said the sender encodes the message, sends the message to the receiver, the receiver decodes the message, and then what do we have to do? What's next? In the communication process. Okay, I say to you there's a cat outside. There's a cat outside. Alright, I've encoded the message, sent it to you, and what's your response to that? Cat outside. Action. Action. Yeah. Yeah. So what sort of action? What, what do you want to do? We need to get understanding. Exactly. You both, both the sender and the receiver should check understanding. So me, just me, are saying there's a cat outside, and then you going out to go and have a look. Yeah. You're probably yeah. thinking, what kind of cat is it? A small, uh, tabby cat. Yeah. But it's an action. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's um. It's a bobcat. Yeah, or a jaguar. How many of you know that's a big cat? Yeah. So we need. That's why it's very important to check understanding. Okay. I remember many years ago, my dad. Uh, we were in Nigeria, and my dad said to us, "We, we were a kid. When I was. I don't know. We were teenagers. He said to us that look." There's a get that fish from the, the boot of the car. Go get the fish. So two of my brothers went to go to the car to go and get the fish. Because he used to bring fish from either the market or by the roadside, so he used to sell the fish. When they went to the car to go and get the fish out, it was a shark. In fact, the shark was quite a sizable. It must have been at least two meters long. It was a hammerhead shark. So it was quite big, and it see the way they both they had to struggle to carry that shark in to the house before we had to cut it up into about small bags, you know, like carrier bags, shopping bags, filled about maybe 24 of those and went into a deep freezer. So the communication was, you know, we didn't check understanding. Fish, thinking they used to come to the market and it's probably some catfish that it would normally buy or some fish that, and even catfish are quite big but not that big. Yeah? So that's why it's important in the communication process. You check understanding. What kind of fish is it? Yeah? You know, the Lagos Lagoon, they used, to, they used to have all kinds of fish they used to bring out of that thing. Yeah? So sender encodes the message, sends the message to receiver, receiver decodes the message, and both check understanding. That's the final step in the communication process. All right? This, not this is revisions. Remember this, everyone? How do we communicate face to face? We said we communicate in three ways, face-to-face -face communication, through our words, our tone, and body language. Do you remember I said that yesterday? So words, tone, body language. Who remembers what percentage of all communication is words? Yesterday. 7%. 7%, yeah? 7% words, tone? 38% tone, excellent. And body language is 55. We said over half of communication, it comes from our body language. Okay? So... Verbal, com verbal communication represents 45%. So people are actually listening 45% of the time. The remainder, they're looking, aren't they? It's observation. Okay? So, talking about body language and the way we communicate, we need to look at uh, different expressions. And also be careful of the way you express yourself when you're communicating to someone. So, there are three types of behavior that can be perceived through our body language. So when we look at assertive behavior, we're looking at our body posture. Well, what sort of posture should you have? 